Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for your interest in this presentation. Uh, my name is Fei Tao. I'm a PhD candidate at Purdue University. Uh, the title of my presentation today is Discovering Failure Criterion of Composites by Sparse Regression Under Compressed Sensing. Uh, a composite material is heterogeneous and usually anisotropic. A reliable design of a composite structure needs to consider the failure of a composite. However, the failure analysis of composite material is challenging, as composite failure are usually governed by various mechanisms. Uh, for example, uh, for the left, left picture, it shows a multi-directional composite laminate. The failure of this uh, laminate it is governed by uh, fiber failure, delamination, and their matrix splitting. So a number of failure criteria has, uh, have been proposed to, to predict the failure of composites. Uh, for, ex for example, on the right picture, it, show, uh, it shows some of the failure criteria that are tested during the worldwide failure exercise one. This failure criteria can be classified into microscopic and the macroscopic criteria. The macroscopic criteria, which assume that their failure can be described by their macroscopic variables, such as the average stress or strength, are more popular in their engineering design, as it is more computationally efficient and they're simple to apply. Um, their macroscopic failure criteria can take their dis distinct failure mechanisms into failure criteria to form a phenomenological model. For example, uh, Haishin failure criterion is one of the most popular phenomenological models in their engineering practice. Haishin divided the failure into four failure modes, namely um, tensile or compressive fiber mode, tensile or compressive matrix mode. Uh, Haishin formulated his criterion in terms of the first four stress invariants with respect to the rotation about the fiber direction. However, the selection of these invariants is empirical. There is no rigorous physics behind that. Although re remarkable success has been achieved using Haishin's failure criteria, uh, it does not always fit the experimental result very well. For example, um, Haishin failure criteria cannot accurately describe the uh, compressive fiber failure mode of composites, as it used their uh, vertical line to represent their uh, failure envelope. So this can be shown uh, in this uh, picture. Well, recently, their data-driven approach has attracted many researchers in the mechanics field. Um, so we are interested in whether can we apply the data-driven approach to discover failure criterion from experimental data. So currently, the majority of the research are focusing on using a neural network to discover the physics laws that govern the data. However, the neural network requires a huge amount of training data. Um, unfortunately, the uh, data size of composites failure data is still small compared to big data. Uh, recently, Professor Burton um, employed a framework that combines sparse regression with compressed sensing discover the governing equations of several nonlinear dynamical systems from data. So inspired by this work, we are interested in applying sparse regression with compressed sensing um, to discover failure criteria. Um, <clears throat> and uh, then we are also interested in um, to, to include a failure mechanism in the discovered failure criteria. And finally, uh, we are also interested in enforce the constraint to yield a, uh, a conservative criteria so that the predicted results that are smaller than the majority of the experimental data. So next, I will introduce the theory of sparse regression with compressed sensing. Um, the regression analysis is a process to estimate the <clears throat> uh, relationship between an outcome variable and their ind independent variables. So the regression of a system can be expressed uh, with this equation. Um, in this equation, uh, y is the measurements of the outcome variables. And the theta 
uh, is the matrix that includes all the candidate functions. Here I have shown a quadratic candidate function matrix in the uh, theta matrix. And the xi is the matrix of coefficients of the candidate functions. So a standard regression to solve for xi will yield non-zero solution for each element. So then it is hard to use the standard regression approach to identify the governing equations. However, for the sparse regression, we can add the uh, L1 regularization uh, to the uh, regression to form a lasso or use the sequential least square method to identify the most important features that govern the data. So therefore, uh, the majority of the elements in the coefficients matrix are zero. So this process can be summarized uh, with this figure. So in this figure, we first collect the input data and then we feed the data into the uh, sparse regression with compressed sensing model. And uh, then um, this model can find the most important features that govern the data. And based on these features, then we can output the uh, model we are interested in. Uh, well, another thing I want to mention is here is that the process to find the coefficients matrix is closely related to compressed sensing. And uh, compressed sensing will normalize the uh, theta matrix um, to ensure the restricted isometry property. So in this study, uh, we normalize the, the candidate function by the L2 norms, which is computed uh, with this equation. Uh, then we propose the uh, problem to demonstrate that it is possible to apply uh, the proposed method to discover failure criterion from noise data. So to generate the data, we use the hashing failure criteria. Um, the material was chosen to be E-glass fiber MY750 composites. Then this table, this is the strength properties of this material. Um, the failure envelope according to hashing failure criterion is shown on the right picture. So we select either candidate functions are up to a cubic form. In addition, we also followed Hashin's failure uh, mechanisms. So then we, this will lead to four columns of their target values in the sparse regression. So the compressed sensing uh, are implemented by um, dividing their candidate functions by the L2 norm uh, of, of that row. So to add a noise to the data, um, one method is to uh, add a noise directly to the target value. That is, we use a, like for example, a Gaussian distribution and then time or coefficient eta and then add this to the target value. Another method is to add a noise to the uh, candidate functions. So for this study, for the uh, implementation simplicity, then we uh, added a noise directly to the uh, target value. Then the bottom three plots are the data after uh, adding noise uh, with a noise magnitude equal to uh, 0 0.02. Uh, and the, the maximum error uh, in this plot has reached the 4% difference. Um, besides, in this study, uh, we, did, we, we did not investigate the compressive fiber failure mode. Um, this is because the hashing generated a rectangular failure envelope. So then it is very easy to determine um, that envelope. So then we did not include it in this demonstration. So here is the result. Uh, the top three plots presented the comparison between original data and the predictive data. So you can tell that under the 0.2 noise magnitude, the sparse regression with compressed sensing can identify the ground equations of the three failure modes very accurately uh, as the predicted line is very close to the original data line. And then the bottom uh, two tables presented the comparison of the coefficients of candidate functions between exact and the identified values. So uh, as you can tell that first, the proposed method can identify the most important features uh, as the uh, identified coefficients are sparse and they only have non-zero values on their most important features. In addition, the errors are very small. The largest error is about uh, one percentage. 
So uh, we also conducted study to explore under which noise magnitude will the uh, sparse regression with compressed sensing fail to identify the current equation. Um, to investigate that, we added the noise to the data uh, from, from zero to uh, 0 0.2. Um, the, the, the magnitude is from zero to 0 0.2. And then the top three plots are the comparison of their uh, failure envelopes between exact and their identified. And you can tell that their, uh, with the eta runs from uh, zero to 0 0.1, the sparse regression can identify the Garden equation very well as their original data's curve are very close to their identified uh, curves. Uh, and one thing you need to notice that uh, uh, with their eta equal to 0 0.1, their maximum error has already reached 20 percentage. And their, in this plot, it also shows that at eta equal to 0 0.2, then their sparse regression failed to uh, identify their, um, um, their, their exact uh, relationship. <clears throat> and their, then to quantitatively analyze their error in the data, we also plotted their error between uh, exact result and uh, identified result. The result shows that uh, with their increase of noise magnitude, then their error will also increase. So this result makes sense as their increase of noise will make it more challenging to find their uh, uh, Garmin equation. Besides, we can also tell that the majority of the errors are very small, uh, which confirm that the identified results are accurate. But at certain regions, for, for example, uh, in this area, uh, in this region, um, the error is large. Um, so this is because their exact value uh, in this region, they are very small. So then a small disturbance could result in uh, a larger error. Uh, however, this will not influence the overall accuracy of their uh, discovered failure criteria, as we can observe from these three plots that their uh, discovered failure criteria uh, match their uh, exact result curve very well. Um, uh, and uh, after demonstrating their capability of the sparse regression with compressed sensing to discover failure criterion from noise to data. And we are also interested in applying the method to the uh, experimental data. So then we collected the experimental data um, of the biaxial failure stress envelopes for uh, unidirectional composites from worldwide uh, failure exercise one report. Uh, unfortunately, the report did not provide the data of their fiber failure mode and their matrix failure mode of their same material. Um, so then we used the data of their T300 um, BSL 914C to identify their um, uh, fiber failure criteria and their e glass RY556 to identify their matrix failure criteria. Um, besides, the noise in their experimental data uh, was strong. Um, that was because their, their uh, experiments was conducted uh, by various researchers with various specimens for the same material. So uh, thus, depending on their noise, then a filter was applied to denoise the data. And here's the result of the sparse regression based on the uh, experimental data. The top two plots plot, uh, shows, um, shows their comparison um, um, of their fiber modes. And the blue dots are the experimental data. Um, the dashed orange line is the hashing's result. And the red line represents the sparse regression result. Uh, as you can tell that uh, the sparse regression can successfully identify their failure criterion from uh, experimental data as the line lying in the middle of the experimental data. Uh, in addition, we can also tell that their sparse regression is better than their Hashing's result. Um, for example, for their uh, compressive fiber failure mode, while Hashing um, uses a rectangle to represent their failure envelope, their sparse regression result can capture the trend of their data. Uh, for their tensile fiber mode, their sparse regression also identify a better failure criteria. For this plot, you can tell that although their uh, sparse regression 
is less conservative than the Haitian's uh, failure criteria. Their sparse regression curve captured the trend of their data better than the Haitian's failure criteria. And for their compressive metrics and their tensile metrics failure modes, uh, it shows similar uh, results. Well, uh, the previous two examples show their feasibility to apply their sparse regression to discover failure criteria. However, their identified result lies in the middle of the data. While in the design of composite structures, then we typically want their conservative design. So this, um, this, this indicates that the model predicted results should be smaller than their experimental data. Well, uh, we can also satisfy that needs with their sparse regression um, from an optimization approach. So to achieve that, we can set a constraint that enforces the predicted data being smaller than the experimental data. And then in their implementation, we can use our penalty function that shifts the error that are, um, that are negative to zero. Then we can add this loss to the original mean square error loss to form a modified uh, loss function. So this modified loss function will be fit into uh, an optimizer. So for this study, we use the atom optimizer. Then for this atom, atom optimizer, then we set the learning rate to be 10 power minus four and the coefficients of constraint loss to be 10 power minus five. And now here's the result. So in those uh, plots, again, the blue dots represent the experimental data. Um, the dashed orange line uh, represent the Hessian's result. The red line is the sparse regression's result. And the black line is the sparse regression with constraint result. You can tell from these uh, results that, um, the, that the major of the experimental points are excluded from the black curve which indicates that the majority of their prediction made by their sparse regression with constraint is smaller than their experimental data. In addition, we can also observe that um, there are still some points, for example, here and here, um, they are still inside the curve. So if one wants to keep tuned their uh, constraint curve, they can increase the coefficients of their constraint loss to, uh, to achieve that. However, here we stopped keeping uh, tune that. This is because um, the experimental data also has very strong noise in it. Then keeping tune the curve to be smaller than the experimental data will decrease the accuracy of the prediction significantly. So then um, but overall, we can tell that the uh, inference constraint to the discovered criterion could make their prediction be more conservative and their satisfied needs to directly use their uh, discovered criterion in their design of our structure. Well, with the above results, I can conclude the presentation. So first, um, the sparse regression with compressed sensing um, does not need big data to discover failure criterion, which fits the current failure data size constraint and can identify the most important candidate function that govern data. And second, um, the sparse regression with compressed sensing can identify the failure criterion accurately from the noise data. And the, the uh, discovered criterion can also include the failure mechanisms in the discovered um, in, in, in its result. And the, finally, we also demonstrated that the reinforce of constraint to the discovered failure criterion can yield a more conservative result. So we can satisfy the needs to directly use the discovered failure criterion in the design of a composite structure. Okay, so thank you for listening and I'll take your questions.